Welcome back cabin crew. Hope you've had a good week. Now today we're going to talk about a man who met Jesus and he was a Pharisee. Now a bit like this one. Remember we talked about this Pharisee before who was so proud that he couldn't see any need for Jesus. Well our Pharisee today is not like that Pharisee at all. In fact he loved to study God's word and think about it. And, you know, he must have heard about Jesus and wondered very much who he was. And this man's name is Nicodemus. And we find him in the Gospel of John. And he actually came to talk to Jesus. But he came at night time. Now Nicodemus came to visit Jesus by night time and it was dark so he came to talk to him quietly on his own privately just wanted to ask him questions and he said to him rabbi which means teacher it's a sign of respect so he'd obviously heard of him and he said we know that you're a teacher and I've se we've seen the miracles that you've done. And nobody could have done that unless it was from God. So you see, perhaps Nicodemus was already beginning to wonder just who Jesus was. And he wanted to talk to him about it. So why did Nicodemus come to see Jesus at night time? Well... One reason might be that Jesus had been teaching all day and so had Nicodemus and at least it was time when both of them could talk uninterrupted and they could be on their own. But of course another reason might be that the Pharisees, remember, had decided that they didn't like Jesus or his teaching. And so Nicodemus didn't want to be seen by the other Pharisees but he desperately wanted to talk to Jesus himself which is why he came in the under cover of darkness so that he could come quietly and not be seen. Either way he wanted to come and ask Jesus questions about the kingdom of heaven. He really wondered about who Jesus was because he could see the miracles that he did and he could see that he was a teacher of God's law, just as he was. And how Nicodemus loved God's law. And he was looking at the scriptures and wondering about Jesus. So, we're going to find out what they talk about now, aren't we? Jesus' response to Nicodemus is very interesting. He wants to talk to him about the kingdom of God. He knows Nicodemus loves God's word and has been searching for a relationship with God. And he tells him three different truths and shows him three different pictures of what the kingdom of God is like and how to find it. And the first one is this, a baby. And Jesus says to him, Very truly I say to you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Now, what is a baby like? Well, what is a baby like? It starts off very, very small in a mummy's tummy. Can you see that scan picture showing the baby inside the mummy's womb being ready to be born? And OK, and when it is born, can you see? Very, very small. And oh dear, crying, oh dear, dear, dear. And that's what babies do, they sleep a lot and they want to eat a lot and they feed and they cry a lot and they make a lot of mess and we have to look after them, don't we? And then gradually babies get a little bit older and they start to sit up and they start to be able to do a little bit more play with toys and go to the park 
and then begin to learn to walk. They can do things. And then look and gradually learn more and more things about the world, things that they can do. And can you see this big sister here, this same girl now has got a little baby brother. And can you see how much bigger she is to her baby brother? There's no way she could go back to being that size again, could she? Well, how many of you can remember what it was like when you were a baby? I think lots of us have grown lots and lots since then, haven't we? Some of us, it was a longer time ago than others. So Nicodemus is quite shocked when Jesus says to him, truly, truly, I say to you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. And he goes, well, how can I be born when I'm old? I can't enter my mum's womb again. Can I and be born? He's thinking of a, being a, a, a real baby, a physical baby. And of course, we can't do that. So Jesus says, no, no, no. I mean, you can't enter God's kingdom unless you're born again of the Holy Spirit. And God coming to live in our hearts and turning us around and making a change in our lives and forgiving us and giving us a fresh start. Just as a baby, when it's born, is in a totally new um, place. He's no longer in a mummy's tummy, is he? It's actually out in the world and he's got to learn a new way of doing things and a new way of eating and a new way of breathing. So we, when we're born again of the Holy Spirit, we have to learn new ways of doing things, new ways of responding to God, new ways of reacting, new ways of being right before God. And I think that's what Jesus meant when he talked to Nicodemus. Well, our memory verse this week is, you must be born again, John 3, verse 7b. And here's our friend Nicodemus, looking into God's word, listening to what Jesus told him, and thinking, you must be born again. During Jesus' ministry, he taught in public places, performed many miracles, and proclaimed God's truth with great power and conviction. Many came to listen to his teachings, and many people loved him, but others hated him. Some understood his power and wisdom, but were troubled because it clashed with their traditions. This was true for a man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jewish people, and he was a Pharisee. The Pharisees were a part of the religious leadership of the day. Many of them thought God would only accept them if they did all the right things. But no one can obey perfectly. That's why we need Jesus. Nicodemus wanted to speak to Jesus, but because he was a Pharisee and most Pharisees didn't agree with Jesus' teaching, he had to be careful not to be seen with Jesus in broad daylight. So, late one night, guided by the light of the stars and moon, Nicodemus found his way through the dark streets of the city to the place where Jesus was staying. He had a lot of questions about the law, about Jesus' teaching, and about Jesus himself. Jesus was ready to explain to Nicodemus everything he needed to know. And that night, Nicodemus would leave a changed man. Jesus explained to Nicodemus that he could not be part of God's kingdom unless he was born again. This really confused Nicodemus. It's impossible for a grown man to become a baby and be born again, he said. But Jesus wasn't talking about becoming an actual baby. He was talking about a life change so dramatic, so radical, so new, that it would be like being born again. Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, Jesus explained, he could not enter the kingdom of heaven. Nicodemus tried hard to wrap his mind around what Jesus was saying to him. Jesus knew that Nicodemus was having a hard time believing him, so he said, if you're having a hard time believing earthly things, it will be very hard for you to believe heavenly things. But you must believe that I am the Messiah. I have come to give people eternal life. Now Nicodemus was beginning to understand. Jesus was the Messiah, the one he had been waiting for. And Jesus' mission was to give new life. Jesus went on to say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. 
Jesus also told Nicodemus that he didn't come to condemn the world, but the world would be saved through him. That day, Nicodemus learned about God's love and about eternal life. He believed and found his place in the kingdom of God. The end. There's another picture Jesus uses, and that's of the wind. Can you see the wind in the trees behind me? Well, you can't actually see the wind, can you? What can you see? You can see the leaves blowing as the wind passes through, can't you? And when we're down at the seashore, we can see the waves blowing more with the wind, can't we? And so Jesus said, use this picture of the wind. And he said, the wind blows where it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. We don't know where the wind comes from, do we? We just know it's there. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. We don't know the Holy Spirit's there, but we see the effect it has in our lives. Here's something else that uses the wind. A kite flying in the sky. So Nicodemus is still puzzled by all this, this talk of wind and being born again and the Holy Spirit. And he says, well, how can all this be? And Jesus wonders, he says, look, you're Israel's teacher, you know God's word, and yet you're not understanding these things. I'm telling you of what we know and see, but still you don't understand. So Jesus had been talking to him about examples. He'd been telling him up from God's word. And uh, he's saying, well, how are you going to understand? But Jesus, of course, has been in heaven. He's saying no one has ever gone into heaven unless the one the, who came from heaven, the Son of Man. And he's talking about himself. He came from heaven, didn't he? He's God's son. And then Jesus actually, because Nicodemus is a teacher of the Old Testament. He talks about an example in the Old Testament, something that actually happened, which was when um, there were some snakes in the wilderness and they were biting the people and it was poisonous and the people couldn't get rid of the poison. And so they put a snake, on, they lifted a snake up on a stick and when they looked at it, they were healed miraculously by God. Now, sin is a bit like that. We can't get rid of it. But we have to look up. Guess what? There we have to look. Yes. And he's saying, Jesus said, the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Well, of course, Jesus was going to go on the cross, wasn't he? And he's trying to tell Nicodemus this, that there were time was coming when Jesus himself was going to die. Jesus knew about it even then, right at the start of his ministry. And he's telling Nicodemus, this is how you can be born again. This is how you can deal with the poison of sin. This is how you can have a fresh start. And it's through the Holy Spirit that we can't see, but we can see what he does in our lives. So it's wonderful, really. And right at the end of this passage, there's this wonderful verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And it's all to do with this, Jesus, the Son of Man, coming to give us eternal life. Well, our craft this week is a jigsaw. And we've got the jigs this jigsaw on that verse that I've just talked about, which is John 3, 16. For, here we are, look. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And there we go. These pieces all fit in like this. So I suggest what you do is start with the words and then work your way through, seeing if you can get them all together. There we are. There's a challenge for you. Okay, so here we have Nicodemus, who loved God's word, and if you remember, came to Jesus at night time because he was frightened of the other Pharisees, and he wanted to talk to him, and Jesus told him, you must be born again. And he showed him, didn't he, those 
four pictures. The baby being born again, a fresh start. The Holy Spirit being like the wind. And how he, the Holy Spirit comes and goes. We don't know. We don't see him, but we see what happens. And then this picture from the Old Testament of the snake that represents our sin, poisonous. And how they looked up to this stick on a, um, this snake on a stick. And how that is a picture of how Jesus himself was going to be lifted up. And by looking to him, we can get rid of sin's poison. And this other one that says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 But you know what? There's something else even more wonderful. Because we see Nicodemus again. And if you look down here, as you see, that's John 20. And this is the burial of Jesus. There's Nicodemus. Now, Joseph of Arimathea is go asking Pilate for permission to take down Jesus' body. And with him came Nicodemus, the man who'd come to Jesus at night. And they wrap up Jesus' body in um, ointment and cloth and put him in a new tomb. But you see there, Nicodemus is coming forward. He's no longer frightened. He's a changed man. He's willing to step out and say, yes. I am one of Jesus' followers. So he completely took on board in the end all that Jesus said to him. And he himself was born again. Have a great week all of you. Enjoy your school holidays. And I'll see you next time. Bye.